For many years, Intel's integrated graphics were the butt of jokes in the tech world, only really usable for getting output to a display. But a lot has changed thanks to a variety of factors, and we're going to see just how far Intel's come. And what better way than by looking at AAA games from yesteryear and how they hold up? The results are interesting. But before that, you, yes you, can win an Intel NUC 13 Pro i7 mini PC thanks to Simply NUC. It features the i7 1360p processor with XE integrated graphics, same as in this video. For your chance to win, follow the link in the video description. US residents 18 and older are eligible. Strong competition from AMD and consumers demanding more from their laptops and mini PCs have pushed Intel to do more on the iGPU front. And while graphics chips have many uses such as video production and AI, much of the push for more performance has come from the very vocal gaming crowd. AMD is leading in the field of x86 CPUs with integrated graphics and you're mostly seeing their chips show up in gaming handhelds, which are a newly growing segment thanks to the popular Steam Deck. Gamers want to be able to play the latest games on the go, and this is being done with just integrated graphics, which was a pretty laughable idea only a few years back. While Intel trails AMD, they have improved iGPU performance dramatically in the last couple of years, and with Intel's creation of its discrete GPU division, future Intel integrated graphics should benefit. As of now, esports titles using Intel's high-end iGPU get good frame rates. But in this video, we're focusing on AAA single player games. What's acceptable is subjective, but as a base, I thought we'd cut the iGPU some slack and aim for 1080p medium quality settings and a stable 30fps. Both these metrics mostly match the game consoles. For this test, we're using the Intel NUC 13 Pro Mini PC featuring the Intel i7 1360p CPU with 16GB of 3200 DDR4 memory. It's a flagship mobile CPU with the highest single core performance I've tested. For graphics, Intel's XE iGPU has 96 execution units at 1.5GHz. Even with the older gaming titles, it's easily going to be the bottleneck. Ok, so where to start? Well, what better year than exactly 10 years ago? I'm choosing a game I have from each year that requires a good amount of GPU power for the time. And in 2013, Crisis 3 was a AAA game pushing desktop PCs hard. A Core i5-750 was recommended for the CPU and an Nvidia GTX 560 or Radeon HD 5870. And yep, even this 10 year old game still pushes Intel's current iGPU on the medium preset. In outside areas, it's above 30fps, while inside, it gets closer to 60, but mostly in the 40s and 50s. Nothing amazing, but I'll give it a pass for the 2013 game library. In 2014, Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor was one of the biggest game releases of the year. For this one, a Core i7-3770 is recommended and a GTX 660 or a Radeon HD 7950. Quite the increase compared to Crisis 3. And Shadow of Mordor performs better than Crisis 3. Whether it's in the open world or in battle, it hangs around the 45 to 50 FPS mark and is a pretty good gaming experience. Dropping the rendering resolution or some detail settings would definitely get you closer to a smooth 60 FPS. Games released in 2014 also get a pass. Grand Theft Auto V was the biggest release of 2015 and surprisingly runs the best so far. This game has really been optimised over the years. There's no quality presets, so I've just gone with the default and not checked any of the extra higher quality options. GTA V is close to a locked 60fps whether you're inside or outside. Since we seem to be getting better frame rates as we go up the years, I thought I'd test another popular title that was very performance heavy in 2015, and that's The Witcher 3. Like GTA 5, this game has gone through a lot of updates since it was released, and the recommended specs are an Intel i5-7400 or Ryzen 1600 paired with a GTX 1070 or Radeon RX 480. That's a steep jump in requirements, and Intel's i7-1360p 
doesn't manage to hold 30 FPS at medium detail with no resolution scaling. Even lowering the quality settings doesn't help. We'll come back to this title later, as it has some modern image scaling options to compensate. 2015 isn't a pass or a fail, so let's go with OK. Rise of the Tomb Raider is our 2016 title. The recommended specs are an Intel i7-3770K and a GTX 970 at 1080p. The game performs pretty well most of the time. It's definitely playable, but there are areas with dips into the 20s. 1360p doesn't bat a transistor on the CPU side of things, but the iGPU can sometimes help jump the frame rate to the 40s on rare occasions. Again, not a pass since the frame rate doesn't hold a steady 30fps, but it's okay. Horizon Zero Dawn was the first major PlayStation exclusive game ported to PC in 2017, so it was a big deal. The recommended requirements are an i7 4770K, or Ryzen 1500X with a GTX 1066GB, or RX 588GB. At the medium quality setting, which is the same as a PS4, the frame rate is too slow. Dropping it to low only helps a little bit, but it's time to give this one an epic fail. But there's still more to explore, because in 2018, Sony released God of War, and this one is a unique title because of its super sampling options. God of War's recommended CPU requirements are an i5 6600K or Ryzen 5 2400G, and for graphics, a GTX 1060 or RX 570. Now predictably, the game runs poorly at medium settings. Dropping to low quality helps, but it's still much too low of a frame rate to bother with. The uniqueness of this game is that it was one of the first to include AMD's FSR2 tech, which works on all GPUs. FSR2 is a temporal upscaling technology which allows you to run the game at a lower resolution and then upscale it to give similar image quality results. It reduces the amount of GPU performance needed to run at higher resolutions and is miles ahead in image quality compared to a spatial upscaler like FSR1, which I don't recommend. Using the lower performance mode, the FPS has jumped up a lot. Still too slow, but much better. If I change it to ultra performance, the game starts looking like ass and doesn't gain many frames. But if I lower the quality settings to low and choose performance mode for FSR2 upscaling, it is a pretty good gaming experience. FSR2 has also been added to The Witcher 3 and allows you to comfortably go above 30 FPS. Intel also has its own upscaler called XESS and that will no doubt feature in many future game titles, but for now, FSR2 works fine. So thanks to the rapid improvement in iGPUs and the use of modern upscaling techniques, newly released games should be playable on future high-end iGPUs instead of only the really old stuff. That being said, I think the comfortable cutoff point for AAA game titles on the i7-1360p is 2015, where upscaling techniques didn't exist yet. The graphics requirements in 2016 and up jump generationally and are too much for the 1360p to handle. So there's still quite a bit of catch up to be done for Intel on the iGPU front. And of course, you can still play newly released games that aren't so graphically demanding on this iGPU, no problem. Well, it was fun checking out the biggest games of yesteryear on the i7 integrated graphics. If you enjoyed it and want to see the same done on the AMD side, leave a comment and it might just happen. In the meantime, why not check out my review of the i7 Intel NUC 13 Pro here. Cheers!